Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at the second day of vectors, and we're going to use our calculator on this example. And this is a free response question that's been on the AP test in the past. So I've got a particle moving along a curve. I've got x, y plane, and we've got a parametric set of equations here. And we've got, at time t equals 2, we have a position. We know that x is 7 and that y is 4. And so we're supposed to write the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the point where t equals 2. So of course we're going to use our y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 to write this equation of our tangent line. We already have our x and our y at the t value of 2. The last thing we need is our slope or our derivative at the t value of 2. And of course we know that our slope dy dx is going to equal in parametrics it's dy dt over dx dt and we want to evaluate this at the time when t equals 2. So my equation is going to be y minus 4 equals, I'm going to leave space for my m there, x minus 7. So let's figure out our derivative. Well, luckily for us, we already have dy dt and dx dt. We have them in terms of t. So we just have to plug in 2 for t. And t for 2, so we plug in 2 for t, we're going to get cosine of 4. That's going to be our dy dt divided by the sine of 8. And if you want a decimal for this, you can use your calculator to get that value. But there's our tangent line equation. Now our speed of the particle is going to be, we have an equation for that. And that's, of course, our magnitude of our velocity vector. So our speed is going to equal the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. Now we're doing this at t equals 2. We already have x prime, so if we plug 2 in, we get the sine of 8, but we want to square that, and then plus, we plug in 2 for our y, we get cosine of 4, and we want to square that. Now here I'm actually going to ask my calculator what that value is, and that worked out to be, I did it on the calculator, 1.186. All right, next question asks, for what value of t from 0 to 1 does this tangent line have a slope of 4? So we want to know when does dy dx equal 4, but on the interval from 0 to 1. Now on this one, I've actually graphed this on my calculator, so we're going to get back to the calculator and take a look at this. In y equals, I put in my slope equation, which is dy dt over dx dt, but I also graph y equals 4. And on my window, I'm only looking from 0 to 1. And so if you graph this, I've got a little intersection here. So you can do F5 for math, and we can go down to an intersection. Hit enter there. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Lower bound, we're just to the left of our intersection, and our upper bound is just to the right of our intersection. Keep in mind, these are going to be t values here, and I've got a t value of 0.616. So that's the time between 0 and 1 when the slope actually equals 4. So we've got this at t equals 0.616. All right. So we also have to find the acceleration vector at this time. So what I've done on my calculator, my acceleration vector is the derivative of my velocity vector. So let's go back to the home screen here and I'll show you. I did this earlier on my calculator. What I did first of all is I found the derivative of x prime which would give me x double prime and I told my calculator to evaluate that at 0.616 because it says acceleration vector at that time. And then I took the derivative of y prime, which would give me y double prime, to get the y component of our acceleration vector, and that gave me negative 0.456. So I took the derivative of x prime and the derivative of y prime to get my acceleration component, and I plugged in 0.616. And so I got those two values right there. And so let's write that down as a vector. So that's going to be, little bracket, 1.107 comma negative 0.456. That's my acceleration vector at the point 0.616. All right, last thing. Find the position of the particle at t equals 1. Well, of course, to get position, we are going to integrate velocity. So I'm going to show you the fundamental theorem of calculus, and I'll show you that I did that on the calculator. If we integrate from 2 
to 1. Now, why would I pick 2 and 1? Of course, 2, we, that's our initial condition, and 1 is what we're looking for. So if I integrate from 2 to 1, sine of t cubed dt, what is this going to give me? I'm integrating my velocity. This is my x equation for my x prime velocity in the horizontal direction. So if I integrate this, I'm going to get my position at 1 minus my position at 2. And so using a little bit of algebra, I can solve for my position at 1 by adding x of 2 to the other side. And they told me that my x-coordinate at 2 was 7. So 7 plus my integral from 2 to 1 of sine of t cubed dt is going to give me my x-coordinate at 1. Using the same process for my y-coordinate, I get that my original y-value of 4 plus the integral from 2 to 1 of y prime of t, this is going to give me my y coordinate at 1. So I'll show you how I did that on the calculator. I did that from the home screen. It's down here a little bit. So I did, I, I did this all on the calculator, evaluated between those points, and I got that my x coordinate was 6.781 and my y coordinate was 4.443. So we'll just write that down and be finished. So I've got 6.7819. We can go further than three decimal places if we want. And then 4.443. And we don't need to put a bracket. Now, I guess you could consider this a position vector, but it's just a little placement, and that's where we're at. So that's all for this, and I will see you guys tomorrow.